So take note that I'll be using my numbers just because I'm familiar with them. And also, I'm not perfect. These numbers won't get a perfect percent yield or an actual yield, just to let everyone know. Now, number one is asking for the actual yield, which is asking for what you actually have of red crystals, what you recovered from your last lab. And that is your vial and crystals minus your dry vial. And that would be about one gram for me. And take note that that would be about three sig figs because it's asking how precise when you're subtracting. Number two asks for the number of moles. And we know that from number one that we have one gram. And we would need to know the molar mass. So to find the molar mass of iron tris fen chloride salt, we would just add up all the numbers and then find the molar mass. But also take note that you're multiplying fen by three, just if you look at the compound, and then adding it with iron and chloride. And then you should have approximately 667.35 sig figs, which is five sig figs, and you're given three sig figs. So you don't have to worry about the number of sig figs from your molar mass because as long as it's more than you're given, then you're going to end up with three sig figs anyways, if that made sense. Now, you would have 0 0.00150 moles of iron tristan chloride salt. Number four is asking what is the limiting, oh I'm sorry, number three is asking what is the limiting reagent in this experiment? And you need a balanced chemical equation to answer this question. So let's we'll start with the, that. And ferrous ammonium sulfate plus 3 fen would produce 1 mole of iron tris fen chloride salt. Now it's also asking uh, which is the limiting reagent, which is which one would produce the least amount of iron tris fen chloride salt. So if A, or um, ferrous ammonium sulfate, was the limiting reagent, and I decided to use A just to make things easier to write. How much, how many moles could it produce of iron tris fen chloride salt? So if you're given 0.95 grams of A, you use mole, molar mass and the mole to mole ratio, which is 1 to 1, you would end up with 0 0.0024 moles. If fen was your limiting reagent, you'd do the exact same thing. You would figure out how many moles of iron tris fen chloride salt would be created. So let's start with 1.13 grams, you use molar mass, then notice that it is a 3 to 1 mole ratio because 3 fen would create 1 mole of iron tris fen chloride salt and you would end up with 0 0.00209 moles. Also notice that 3 sig fix, but in the end your fen is your limiting reagent. Number 4 is asking, calculate the theoretical yield, so under theoretical conditions, how much red crystals could you have recovered? And take note that iron tris fen chloride salt has a mass of 667.35 grams per mole, and you know that your limiting reagent is fen, and it can only produce 0 0.00209 of this. So you multiply the two numbers together, and you would end up with your uh, theoretical yield in grams, which is 1.39 grams. So basically, if you read to this lab, did everything under perfect conditions, and you ended up recovering 100% of it, you would have 1.39 grams of red crystals. Number, oh, but also notice that we only produced one gram. So for number five, it's asking for your percent yield, which is actual over theoretical, actual being what you actually ended up with, which is one gram, and theoretical, meaning under perfect conditions, what did you end up with, which is 1.39, which would make 71.9% yield. Number six is asking for if a student adds twice as much phenanthrolene as she was supposed to when she was attempting this lab, how would this affect her numbers? So let's use numbers to explain. If we read the, this lab using the numbers the lab book asked us to use, which is about approximately 0.86 grams of ferrous ammonium sulfate and one gram of fen, no, two grams of fen because the student doubled it, we would find the limiting reactant of both of these, I mean, we would find the limiting reactant of the two. So let's figure out how many moles would be produced of iron tris fen chloride salt using the 0.86 grams of ferrous ammonium sulfate, which is 0 0.0022 moles. With number two, which would be two grams of fen, we would try to figure out how much, how many moles of iron tris fen chloride salt would be created, and that would be 0 0.0037 moles. And it, as you can tell, the limiting reactant is now ferrous ammonium sulfate, which would change your theoretical yield and your percent yield 
because that's the limiting reactant this time. But if you notice that if you changed it to fen, if you didn't double fen, then fen would still be the limiting reactant. Number seven is asking if you did the same entire lab and ended up with the same numbers except you used NABR, how would that change your answer? Now, let's think this through. NABR versus NACL. The only difference would be that you would end up with iron trisphen bromide salt over iron trisphen chloride salt. So let's write a balanced chemical equation first. You would have ferrous ammonium sulfate plus 3 fen would produce 1 mole of iron trisphen bromide salt, which, as you can tell, there's no difference in the entire balanced chemical equation, just that iron trisphen bromide salt is just a different compound. Now let's compare the two compounds, iron trisphen chloride salt and iron trisphen fen bromide salt. As you can tell, I wrote chloride for both, I'm so sorry. But I meant to write bromide salt for the bottom, and I rewrote it as bromide salt. But the only thing different would be the molar masses. So really in the end, our theoretical yields and percent yields would be different because you have to multiply the limiting reagent with the molar mass to see how much how much grams would be produced. So let's see what the new theoretical yields would be and the new percent yields would be. So let's recall that our limiting reagent is fen and it only produced 0 0.00209 of iron trist fen chloride salt, well now bromide salt. And let's figure out the theoretical yields of this. 0 0.00209 multiplied by the molar mass, which is 756.31 grams per mole, you would end up with 1.51 grams. Now, if we needed to find our actual yield, or I'm sorry, the percent yields, you would do actual over theoretical times 100, our actual being 1 and our theoretical being 1.51, we'd end up with 66.2 percent. Now, we need discussions. What do we need to say? What should we say? Well, you could mention uh, your actual yield, you could mention your theoretical yield, you could mention your, well, you could mention your percent error. What did you do wrong? How close were you to being perfect, I guess? You can mention your percent yield, you can mention sources of error. Your calculator, you know, the calculations were too much and it started to cry and it malfunctioned and it just broke down and now you can't do any of the work. Or human error where you just watched someone else do the lab and smiled. Also, if you were to redo this lab, what would you fix in your work? What would you fix in your human error or your calculation error? And thank you for watching.